This morning we preach a, se- a sermon entitled Diversity and Unity in Spiritual Gifts. I want you to stand for the reading of God's word. Those watching my live stream, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to read from verse 4, but allow me just to, to piggyback quick on verse 1, 2, and 3. And you don't have to worry about that. Let me just read it. And then when we get to verse 4, and then all of us will just read together then. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, now listen from verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away to those dumb idols, however you were led. Can I put this in, in township language? Now, let me, I'm going to read this in English again in the NIV, and I'm going to put it in township language. Is it all right? Now, this is it. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. You know there were times that you were hola, hola, hola. And chasing after stuff. And you know. He said, now, don't be ignorant now about the gifts. Now he's saying, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Meaning, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you cannot curse God. Because God will not go against himself. So this is where we're going to connect now. This is where you're going to play a vital role in this morning service. There are different kinds of gifts. But the same Spirit... Can you see that? But the same spirit that distributes them. They are different kinds of service. But the same Lord. Now I want you to see something in this text that most probably you didn't pick up earlier as we do an exegetical exercise on this. I'm going to be very slow. There are different kinds of gifts. Various gifts. Look at this. But the same spirit. Whenever you see a capital letter S for spirit, it means the Holy Spirit. When it's a small one, it means human spirit. So it says, by the same spirit, there are different kinds of service by the same Lord. First spirit, then Lord. Watch this. There are different kinds of working, but all of them and in everyone, it is the same God. So, What Paul is bringing across here, that within the Holy Spirit, you find the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The whole idea here is to show you the power of diversity and how important it is for everyone here, right from Mr. Billings, right across the very last person here on my left here, every single person are called differently. The mistake of the past was simply this. The fivefold ministry, if it's pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and so on, is there to equip the saints. The emphasis were too long on the fivefold ministry or not on the diversity of the gifts. Meaning, people fight in church to preach Because it's only the five that was emphasized. But yet down there, there's somebody with the gift of healing. And that's not emphasized. And somewhere there, somebody watching by live stream, there's somebody with the gift of prophecy. And that's not emphasized. There's somebody who's blessed with tongues and languages. And that's not emphasized. So what I'm saying in short here... Every single person in this place, you are gifted. Now I am going to emphasize, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you received at least one gift on that day. So there's not one person in this room without a gift. But I can also emphasize, there are people with more than one gift. Since we preached last week, we identified a few gifts. And as we were preaching, some of you, more gifts were were discovered. God will not work. There are people in this place, let me be very clear. 
even if you want to be a medical doctor, the first day, remember when you were young, you say, oh, I want to be a doctor. But the first day when you cut yourself and you had to help somebody with blood, you were scared for blood. And that put you completely off being a medical doctor. Because it's not your thing. Uh, my, 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 my son, uh, Ashley, if he, if he noticed somebody's good in something, he said, it's that man's hooters. It's his things. So there are certain things that's not your thing. The reason why the church of God is frustrated is because they are a misfit. They do something that they're not supposed to do. But if it comes natural, uh, on a very light note, one day we had an a, 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 a altar call for healing. And there was one person with a wheelchair. And I watched. So I called a few of the leaders to come and pray. And then, so there was one, two, three, four, five people. And the sixth person was somebody in a wheelchair. And seven and eight. But I noticed the people that was doing the prayer line to this side towards the wheelchair. They started praying longer. I tell you why. The hope was that somebody go there. Because the truth is, it's not their thing. Because the person who functioned in the gift of healing will go for that wheelchair. And the person that functioned in the gift of healing will lay hands and say, in the name of Jesus. Because I'm telling you here today, I'm not the healer. God is the healer. But God used the vessel to raise sick people in the name of Jesus. Is there anybody in agreement here? I'm here to let you know, the church must get to a point where you are not scared for your gift. You will make a mistake when you prophesy, but prophesy again. You will make a mistake when you lay hands on sick people, but lay hands again. I tell you, I've noticed since I've started preaching here, there's two things that the Lord wanted me to, that, to, to do again. For instance, do you know that when you fail in one area of your life, you're scared to, uh, to do it again? For instance, a business guy who made a mistake, He's double scared to go in business. Because even though you're gifted, but if you see, what's this guy, this Apple guy, how many times he tried? Steve Jobs. But if it's your thing, it's your thing. And if God blesses you, nobody can remove that from you. You are, hands down, you are just blessed in that area. We should not jealous one another. We should lift one another. We should uh, 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 affirm one another. Now, 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 I prayed once for one person who had, who had cancer, lung cancer, and the cancer spread right through the whole body. And I prayed once for the person, and the Lord healed the person entirely from cancer. But, but, I also prayed for somebody else <coughs> who died. And that person was so severely sick, her whole back will open here. And some of you will remember, you went with me, I don't know if Pastor Regan can remember, what was her name? I can almost hear her name. Worms were literally dropping out of her back. That woman was literally alive, but we love her brother, still coming to our church up to the, today. We prayed for her and we baptized her. And I asked God for healing. But she died. You know what happened then? I stopped praying for people because I thought I don't have the gift. But the, the gift is not in your hands. As the Spirit allows. Watch this. But in all of them and everyone is the same God. Now to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good to one, there's giving through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Let's go. Verse 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, miracles, powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Oh! 
all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he, listen to this, distributes them to each one just as he determines. So what I'm saying, I cannot claim, I, I can just be a vessel. But I cannot claim that the gift will every single time work through me. Let me be very simple. If I claim that I have the gift of healing, then you should leave me in Baraguana Hospital on bed one. And by bed 2000, everybody should be out of their bed if it was in my power. But you cannot manipulate the Holy Spirit. All that you can do is to make yourself available for the Holy Spirit to work through you. Is there any agreement in this place? Come on, just to warm you a bit up, put your hands together, give God praise in this house. Can I get a shout for a minute in this place? You may be seated. Let me give you good advice. If you're a little cold, we'll, we'll get the heaters in next week here. We just could not make it this, this, this week. You won't believe that last winter to fill one bottle was 950, then now it's 1,400 to fill. So it just shows you what happened. And I understand uh, what's happening out there in the economy. It's not the easiest thing. I don't know how, how many of you were raised with a, with a nanny or a house help. I was not that privileged. And there's a whole lot of you that's still not that privileged. Ah, everybody received chores. I don't know if you were raised with chores. But today's kids don't know anything about chores. They, they, they leave their bed. They don't make it up. Somebody else make it up. They don't make coffee, no tea, no tea. They receive everything. But I was raised with chores. And, and, and who was raised here with more than five kids in the same house? Come and just wave here. You know what it is, that how hard it is for being so many kids in a small place. We were raised with five in a two-bedroom house. Others were raised ten in a two-bedroom house. Uh, you know what I'm saying. But we were raised with chores. Uh, but did you notice when, I don't know if it was it with you the same, but if one didn't do their chores, all of us will get the hiding. There's not like it's this one. It's like everybody will get the hiding. I don't know how it worked, but my mother clearly could understand that if she gave all of us a hiding, then we will be on the lookout for one another. Later on, if the one didn't do their work, you start doing that person's work. Because you know you don't want the hiding. Because everybody... Make the work light for one another. Do you know in today's life, even if you have a house help or not, do you know if the one can just wash the dishes and the other one see to the washing and the other one just make dinner and the other one do something else, do dishes or so, you make the work light. Now, why would you do, give some simple illustration or example like that for Sunday morning? Simply. Simply, do you know that everybody in this auditorium and those of our crystal, crystal family members and our e-family watching by live stream, each and everyone plays a vital role in the kingdom of God. Now, this is what I want to say. If you don't function in your gift, it is equal like you didn't do the dishes. All of us, all of us are not functional because of one person that's in the pew that's supposed to be active. I'm surprised by people walking up to me and say, I'm just laying a little off. You will not see me so involved anymore. I'm taking time out. I have a problem with that statement because you cannot take time out from the spiritual gift. Now, if you want to take time out, take time out from your working boss and not from the boss. So I'm saying you cannot take time out from the choir. You cannot take time out from hosting. You cannot take time out from your gift in prophecy. You cannot take time out from healing. You cannot take time out from prayer. You cannot take time out from coming to the house of the Lord. If there's something that you need to take time out on, it's on sin. 
is on wrongdoings. Because if you're not click or if you're not connected with God, if you are not placed in the kingdom of God, you have a tendency to grow weary in the house of God. Yes, thank you for that clap there. I appreciate that. That is uh, somebody at least in agreement with me. Oh, if only we had all held hands yesterday. What's the story about? A small child had wandered off in a tall jungle grass near an African village. The little child could not be found anywhere. Even though people searched throughout the whole day and the next day. So someone suggested that the whole village should hold hands with each other and walk through the grass in a long straight line. The child was found. But it was too late. He was dead. For the cold African night had been too much for him. The poor mother wept and wept and wept and wept. Through a tear, people could hear her cry. Oh, if only we had all held hands yesterday. The church is exactly like that. We would have been further if we had to held hands or hold hands yesterday. Do you know where the church, and I'm really frank with everybody here, whenever harm gets to a church, Whenever a church is in a form of demoralization is when people don't hold hands. But I tell you, it's a given fact that people do hold hands when they gossip. It's, it's a given fact that people do hold hands when they, they discuss another family member negatively. It's true, people do hold hands when they gear up and make pockets up in church for not to tithe. They held hands. It's true that people will hold hands if they want to bring your company down. It is true that people, when they see your success, and sometimes family members will hold hands to bring one family member down. It is true that people have a natural tendency to hold hands for the negative. But we are here today to come against it in the name of Jesus. I'm here to declare to the God, to the house of God, into the kingdom of God. That a time has come. I don't know if you know that announcement. Carl Hendricks, what are you doing? I'm announcing that a church of God will function in the giftings of God. I'm announcing here that we will hold hands. I'm announcing here that we will be on the lookout for one another. I'm announcing here that we will prophesy life over one another. I'm here to announce when my brother brother is sick that I will lay hands and I say receive your healing in the name of Jesus I'm here to announce that you will operate in the spirit of God in discernment that you will discern that there's a devil that's hovering over you that wants to bring you and your family down your spirit of discernment will come violently and say I break that power you devil I'm coming face to face I'm coming eyeball to eyeball break your grip over this family in the name of Jesus is there anybody here who'd love to agree with me that no weapon formed against you or your family 
or your children shall prosper. I'm here to declare that I release the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of God in this house. When you see somebody is discouraged, move into the gift of encouragement. Lift the person. When you see somebody needs mercy, move in the gift of mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we must let the devil look bad. We must let the devil look bad because we're going to hold hands. We're going to hold hands. We're going to hold hands. Can I get a shout from you? We're going to hold hands. You're not on your own. We're going to hold hands. The one will wash the dishes. The other one will scrub the floor. The other one will take the, 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 the garbage out. But we're going to hold hands. Because when one, 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 one is not functional, it harms the whole body. Harms the whole body. Your gift is so valuable. If you sing, don't sing for your shower. Sing for God. If you can play an instrument, play it for God. If you can lay hands, pray. I was so encouraged this morning to see some of our leaders, Mr. Goliath and Mr. Mokabe, praying in the foyer on, on, on those pictures are there because we asked the congregation to bring pictures and they were laying nobody asked them to do that all by themselves because you know what that brings joy to my heart you know why it brings joy because we are busy kicking into the gifts i will not jail you because i cannot have all the gifts and you cannot have my gift and i cannot have your gift but together we are great force against the works of the devil i declare no weapon formed against you or your family shall prosper i'm sorry if i sound like an old lp or i was scratch cd but i'm here to declare it will go well with you it will go well with your family it will go well with your finances it will go well with your health is there anybody here would love to shout yeah! time is not allowing me but i just want to drop a few things in your spirit to get through the sermon the functioning of the spiritual gifts brings unity it's because when we when we are on the lookout for one another we will we will walk in in strength because divided we will fall but united we will stand did you see when the family work together the power that sits with that family did you see when a couple works together the power that's in that couple for instance on your own it's hard for you to buy a certain house in a certain bracket but when they put two salaries together all of a sudden you can afford that house the power of two and three where two or three comes together there the lord god commands his blessing we more than two and three in this building i pray grace upon you in the name of jesus christ agree with somebody here that it will go well with you come and pick somebody out uh, just by by but everybody just stand here just stand here just stand here just stand you don't have to touch anybody keep your distance just here make make contact with somebody and say i'm picking you say i'm it's, it will go well with you don't pick your spouse pick another person say it will go well with you i speak life over you in the name of jesus come on come on pick a person say it will go well with you come on pick another person say it will go well with you come on pick another person say it will go well with you come on come on come on come on come on pick another person because we're gonna we're gonna stand together we're gonna work hard to bring this unified power of god back into the house of god we're gonna stand as a unit not just in church we're gonna stand as a unit also at home with our families with our spouses when we stand together oh my god no weapon and formed against us shall prosper we will stand as a wall a mighty wall we will push back darkness in the name of jesus hey the devil is a liar and you're gonna make it receive this and you're gonna make it strong yes yes praise grace praise i receive instructions from god to care up against the devil the Lord said to me, you are way too much on your back foot when the devil pushed forward. The time has come, come on. You mustn't stand like this when you face the devil. Stand like this 
in a position when he is you go back but you come to the front you must don't 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 get let the devil get you flat-footed but stand against him in the name of jesus christ no weapon formed against you come on church come on church you need to use the gifts of the holy spirit it's meant to help us it's meant to lift us up it's meant to establish us you are the head and not the tail is there a witness here you are above and not beneath is there a witness here even if the enemy come from one direction the bible say and the spirit of the lord will raise a standard against it and it will flee in seven different directions the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord going to leave you with yeah I, I feel like that as well I feel like that I feel like that I feel like enough is enough I feel like we had enough bakery we had enough attacks on your life I feel like you must stand up now I feel like you must say enough is enough I feel like you must raise a standard. Come on, I, I sense this. The truth is I'm just containing myself because I want to get this sermon behind me. But can somebody on behalf of me just shout so that I can just save my energy? Can somebody just jump for joy in this house because we are gearing up against the works of the devil. There's a spirit, a beautiful spirit of God in this house. There's unity in this house. Oh, oh, there's hope for us. There's hope for us. There's hope for your family. There's hope for your career. There's hope for your children. There's hope for your business. There's hope for your finances. There's hope for your health. There's hope when we stand together in unity. In unity. In unity. In unity. I'm going to give you a quick... Uh, quick um, Prescriptions and then I'll be out. The first one, you should discover your gift. If you want to build a house, don't look for a violinist. You're looking for a builder. No two of us are exactly alike. And no one possesses every gift. So if you want to build a house, get the builder. And you want to make music, get the musician. What are you saying? Do not neglect the spiritual gift that is in you. Discover your gift. There are way too many people that live in the attitude of others. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it so that you may understand. Stop being a Kardashian. Be you. Is that, that that's, that's a modern version. Because you're not a Kardashian. By the way, you are not gifted. I will not say, show you, I'm just standing like this. Because it's nice to stand like this. You're not a Kardashian. A, a second point is you don't have deep pockets. A third thing, they've, they've got low moral standards. They live like the devil's sisters. You cannot be them. You cannot admire them. Because there is somebody who paid a perfect price on Calvary's cross. If you start admiring Jesus Christ and not the Kardashians, you will see the works of God performing mighty miracles in your life. You will see how the gifts of the Spirit work through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, not by might. Not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The reason why I'm saying that is because you will never discover your gifts if you are somebody else. As much as I want to be Superman, I cannot fly. Even Superman is not Superman. You remember he died in a wheelchair. Can you remember that? Can you remember that? I want you to be you. 
Do you know when you you, when you the full you, you don't jella. Do you know? Look, man. Look. I don't have hair. But I used to have. In the good old days. Now I don't have. So when I shave, I'm still me. And by the way, there are some of you. God blessed you with hair. Because you will look bad with a shaved hair. That's all I'm saying. Because your little head look like a hammer. Mine look like, like a full head. So I don't yell at me. Uh, am I okay with that? So, so if, 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 I, if I put my, my cap on, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not scared for this. This is style, man. I, I, I don't worry about you. If you have long ones from, from Brazil or from India, it doesn't matter. But you, are, you must be the full heel. If you have it from the hot and tot, the koi or the Zulu or the Kokosa, it doesn't matter. You is the full of you. What are you preaching? I'm saying it is hard for you to function in the spiritual gift if you jealous somebody else's gift because you don't even know who you are in the kingdom of God. If you know who you are, be the best you that you can be in the kingdom of God. When you're good, you're good at it. We will clap hands. When you sing my brother or my sister, the anointing will come. When you play that piano, when you play the bass guitar, the anointing will come because you are functional within your gift. If you show me where to sit here and you are a host, your smile will let me feel so good. I will want to come to church back again. When you meet me in the car park and you show me a place to park and you say, good morning sir when i give you the message on my way here to church every sunday morning i'm doing that because i love doing that nobody forces me to do it i get out of bed early in the morning because i want to be here you know why because i know me i'm doing me do the gift that's in you everyone do your gift gift. I'm rushing. Number two, dedicate your gift to God. A gift in the benches will not help anyone. Did you notice that a person with a gift always see the floor on the stage but they never do anything about it. So what I'm saying is you can sing but if you don't show up all that you will be is a nice singing voice with a criticism spirit. That's all that you will be. But if you do good, you will show up. You will show up. You'll do it. There's not one Christian. And God help us. I can't wait. For this COVID to be over. So that we can. Have those huge conferences again. I can't wait. But all I'm saying. When God called you. To do something. Don't do it from that seat. Do it. Functional. Or functionally. Stand up for your gift. So. Dedicate your gift to God. The third one, develop your gift. Now, a piano said, listen to this. Now, everybody is playing there. Just play something. What is that song? What is that song? Sing with them. What's the name of that song? Hold it there. He didn't tell you what was the name of that song. He's operating in his gift. You know what they call that? A melody. When everybody here functions in their gifts, 
the throne of God is going like this. That's my church. Nobody's jealous of one another. It's only him. So beautiful. Now, listen to us. Keep on playing. Keep on playing. Listen to this. A piano said, you know I must practice every day. If I don't practice one day, I know the difference. If I don't practice two days, those who hear me know the difference. Did you hear? If I don't practice one day, I will know the difference. If I don't practice two days, those who hear will know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Your gift is so dormant. It's right there. You should start to exercise it. Practice it. Practice it every day. Mercy. Music. Encouragement. Practice the gifts. For those that's here for the first time and you were not here last week, go on last week's sermon. We have all the gifts out there. Or go on our Facebook of last week, you'll see all the gifts are there. I don't have time to go through it because I need to get into the second service. But what I'm saying is develop your gift. You see, a gift is like a muscle. In the gym. In the gym. Every day. You don't see it in the beginning. They will joke and say, <laughs> Can he also jump? But a year later, your arm will just get to there because the muscle will be developed. The gift is like that. When you start functioning your gift, the devil will joke with you in the beginning. But when it's established, you will be a force for darkness in the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together and to him all the glory. Number four, develop your spiritual gift, which means deploy it. It means to put it into service. It means your gift down there is not going to help anyone. You need to bring it into action. The reason why I enjoy preaching is because I work my gift. I go, I go every second here to what they call a mixed method of preaching in America. I do once a year homiletical classes. I, I, I work my gift. I work it. I work my gift. I study to show myself approved. I'm a DSA. I work my gift. You must do the same. You must read the Bible. Work the gift. Pray. Work the gift. Exercise. By prophesying, laying hands on the sick. Do the things that God called you to do. Work the gift. You're going to make mistakes and sometimes you don't want to have courage. Do you know when somebody is sick laying on a bed and you, and you believe you want to pray for sick people, you're going to be very discouraged when you look at that person and your prayer will go something like, if it's possible, Lord, just if possible, if it's in your will, raise the person. But don't pray like that. Just, just say, where's the oil? Say in the name of Jesus. By the power invested in me. By the grace of the Holy Ghost. The Lord says we shall do greater things. Father, I now lay hands on this person for recovering of sight. I now pray in the name of Jesus. Be healed. In Jesus name. Your gift works with confidence. And also with love. There's no arrogance in the gift. Time is not allowing me. To take you further in this but that's why we're in a series for this week you dare not miss don't miss a service let us work this gift and let us get your gifts through